Just so we're all aware of like what my game plan is, I'm definitely gonna like stab this cheese with a serving knife at some point. That will give your guests an incentive to cut the cheese themselves. Cut the cheese themselves. I'm a food stylist. Consider me a makeup artist for food. I take boring, everyday, average food and make it look amazing. You asked for it and here I am to provide it. I'm gonna show you guys how a food stylist makes a mouth-watering cheese board for entertaining. Before you can do anything with food, to build your cheese board, you have to pick out your props. So what we have here is our New Year's Eve themed cheese board or grazing board setup. We have blacks, golds, silvers. We're really playing up like the upscale version of making a cheese board. Since we have our prop set up just the way we like it, now we're going to mark everything so I can take it to my kitchen and add the food. The next step is the cheese. Obviously, for entertaining, we want a variety of flavors and textures. So I have this beautiful Gruyere cheese that has this really lovely multi-textured and colorful rind on it. And then we're also gonna incorporate our cheddar because I feel like that is a staple. We have a blue cheese, which I think is also essential when building a cheese board. Um, it is obviously a very strong flavored cheese, but it also has this beautiful color and texture. Next, we're gonna do like a round cheese. Normally that's brie or even camembert. I really love a goat cheese and it's also like really mild and people are really familiar with it. And this is a really fun one that has an everything bagel seasoning on it, which is, you know, everything bagel is like everything. So when you see crumbled cheese, already crumbled cheese, already sliced cheese, it's like it's already that one step further prepared for you to go ahead and consume it. So it's already registering in your brain that it's, a, it's ready f to be eaten. At least that's what my stomach is telling me right now. All right, we have five beautiful cheeses for our upscale New Year's Eve cheese board. They look great. I think they're staged really well. So now we're gonna move on to the next thing. So we have prosciutto, very classic, but also delicious. It's a great accompaniment to any cheese, firm or soft. And so we're just gonna take our thin sheets of prosciutto and just kind of roll them up doesn't have to be perfect. We actually don't want it to be perfect. When placing my meat, I just kind of started in a spot that felt good. I have this, you know, a border from the bowl here, but then also kind of a border from the cheese here. And it just fills that space really nicely and flows really well with everything else. So I think I'm gonna go over to this side of the board and just do a, um, a folded salami situation. I would say initially, brie or camembert and prosciutto go really well together. Hard salami and like cheddar or gruyere go really well together. You can mix and match, you could do whatever. You can just be inspired with it and just go what it, with whatever your gut tells you or you can be a little bit more strategic about where you're placing things and how you're placing things. Salami doesn't like to cooperate as much as prosciutto does, so we're just going for it and hoping that it looks great. I have these whole sticks of salami, which are really nice. And also, again, we're talking about adding layers of textures and shapes and colors. Okay, so we have our lovely sliced folded salami. If this guy will stop unfolding or I'm going to like eat him. And then we have this lovely sliced um, cured whole salami and then we have our beautiful prosciutto. So that, we are done, we are done with the meats for now. Other than the cheese, this is probably one of my favorite things to add onto a cheese board or grazing board, and it is the fruit and veggies. I'm actually gonna add a little bit of a crudite section to our cheese board for this. This just adds even more layers to your cheese board um, and is even more inviting for entertaining purposes. So I have all these beautiful vegetables here. These sweet mini peppers are so colorful, flavorful. We're just gonna prep them by slicing them in half, taking out the seeds and the vein 
but we're gonna leave this really cute little green top. It gives somebody like a, a piece to hold on to if they're gonna dip it into something. But then also it's just a really bright green color which adds a visual aesthetic that's really nice. Then I also have these really lovely uh, cucumbers and I'm just gonna cut them on a bias. It's really important to incorporate something green vegetable wise on your crudite part of your cheese board, brightness, freshness, and obviously the texture of a cucumber provides a lot of like crisp, refreshingness to everything. And then I have these really gorgeous watermelon radishes. Since we are technically in fall, radishes are in season. So these are beautiful and not difficult to find this time of year. This one has the green on the outside, so it's a little bit more contrasty. It still has the starburst, like pink, magenta in the middle, but it has like the green on the outside. Okay, last but not least, I'm just gonna add a couple of carrots. They even still have the little green tops on them. So cute. So I have orange, purple, and yellow carrots. This is my next favorite part because we have all these beautiful fruits. So I have red and green grapes, and I think I'm gonna go with the red grapes. The red grapes actually just feel a little bit more elegant and upscale. So I'm just gonna do a little trimming, and then I'm gonna give them a little spritz. Obviously, wet fruit looks the best, it enhances the color, but then also just like visually appealing because fruit is supposed to be moist and juicy and we want our fruit to look like that. We have these beautiful pears. Probably since I went with red grapes, I probably won't go with the red pear, so I think we'll go with the green pear today just to add more contrast. For slicing my pear, I'm just actually going to cut down the side of the pear around the core. And you get these beautiful bright color green skin and the white flesh on the inside. And they're just absolutely beautiful. And since I went ahead and sliced my pear, I'm gonna show you a little trick to keep the pear from turning. We have a concentrated lemon juice product. And then we also have a product, they call it fruit fresh, but it's really like a citric acid. If you have a bowl of water, uh, you can add either one of these products, whichever makes you feel most comfortable to use. I like lemon juice, um, but Fruit Fresh, like I said, it's essentially the exact same thing. But we're just gonna put some lemon juice in this bowl, and then we're gonna put our pear slices in the water. And just let them sit for a little bit. They don't have to be in there for very long. But basically what that does is it creates a shield around your sliced fruit. We're gonna take it out and add it to our board. Okay, so we have this gorgeous blackberries. For food styling, I think the only thing that I would say is uh, when you have like a super mondo huge blackberry like that, it's not necessarily the most attractive even though there's like nothing wrong with it. I would just say having um, your fruit be a more petite size is just really nice and appealing. Okay, we're on step five. We are gonna fill all these cute little bowls that we picked out. So I have a roasted garlic and onion jam. I think the sweetness from the jam itself really is gonna play well with that stinky, creamy blue cheese, but then also it has that savory note which will pair really well with it too. I think honey makes a really great addition to a cheese board. The rich amber color of this honey is beautiful. And I do think that adding the honey onto the cheese board adds an elegant upscale feel to it. And I have um, a store-bought hummus. I am not ashamed of store-bought hummus. I think it's delicious. And if you have a brand that you like, why not make life easier on yourself? Um, just as a little extra bump up, we're going to do some olive oil on top of the hummus. So I have olives from an olive bar. It's called a Castle Vetrano, not to be fancy or bougie or whatever, but these are very mild and buttery in flavor. I'm obviously picking out the brighter green ones that are in this container because we wanna stick with like a very strong, beautiful visual appeal. These are called cherry drop peppers. It adds that visual pop from the red onto the platter. Um, but then the flavor of these little peppers are delicious. They're tart from a brine, but they're sweet and they have a little bit of a kick to them. Alongside the plate with the cherry drop peppers, I'm gonna add some cornichons or gherkin, little gherkin pickles. They pair really well with the cured meats and definitely with like the harder cheeses, um, but then they're obviously just like really great to eat by themselves and they're super cute. Who doesn't wanna eat a tiny pickle? So I think the last thing I wanna add in our 
final empty bowl that we have on our plate is some Marcona almonds. Marcona almonds are blanched almonds that have been fried. Yep, fried deep fried in olive oil and then coated in sea salt. They're absolutely delicious and they pair super well with cured meats, olives, cheeses, the whole shebang. All right, I have reached a stopping point for building this cheese platter in my kitchen. And now we are ready to go back on set where we marked our props originally and put this back in our photo setup and do some finishing touches and really set the scene for our New Year's Eve party with our gorgeous cheese board that we have built today. All right, guys, we have brought everything I made over to our photo set. We've got it all back in its place. So there are a few holes in my board left for just like small things that I wanna add. I wanna put some candied pecans up around the blue cheese and the jam. Another really delicious element you can add to your cheese board that is a small thing that can just fit in between um, other items on your board is dried fruit. I particularly love dried apricots. They're vibrant, tangy, sweet, and it basically tastes like you're eating candy. I also have these really lovely um, raw pistachios that are not in the shell. Um, it'll be convenient for people to eat, but it also adds just like a really gorgeous color. So a couple things that I just wanna bring up about serving a cheese board. Obviously, you would love to pair it with a fresh cooked baguette that you've sliced like so for your guests to um, accompany with their meat and cheese, crackers of any sort. Possibly you want your cheese board to be gluten-free friendly. So you wanna have all of those options off to the side and not necessarily incorporated within your cheese board. We have spoons for our sauces and dips. And then I also have a couple cheese knives, which are obviously really important for people serving themselves. So like I said, we're gonna take a cheese knife and um, stab this guy over here. And then I have this really cute little honey wand that will go with our, in our little honey pond we have over here. So we have these really beautiful candles that really set the scene for our New Year's Eve party. We have our cocktail napkins, we have little plates, and we have our stemless flutes that we're gonna pour some bubbly in. Woo! Okay guys, I think that this cheese board is absolutely delicious and is elegant for any occasion, especially for a New Year's Eve get together. It's so many textures and layers of not only colors, but flavor as well. Be sure to go on YouTube and follow and subscribe to Well Done. Be sure to go on Instagram and follow me. If you put together a cheese board, definitely show me what you're capable of. So happy New Year's, guys. I really hope that you're enjoying watching Food Styles Versus, and I hope that you get to make your cheese board really soon.